So the next one is called auto DAGs. And a DAG in REDCap is a data access group. And to give you kind of a quick rundown, in your user rights for your projects, you have users and then you also have data access groups. Now, most projects don't have data access groups. They just, all their data is in one group essentially. And so you don't need to create a data access group. But if you had, uh, like for example, we have projects that are collecting data from multiple clinic sites over the, across the state or different hospitals in the city. And you're not only wanting to add users at like, let's say we have users here at U of A, and then we have users at, you know, St. Joe's and we have users at Banner and, you know, all the different hospitals. What you would do is you would create your data access because if you have patients that are being seen at St. Joe's, you want to have their data grouped together and you want to limit access to their data. Come, you know, you don't want all the data together. Um, so you would create a data access group. And then when somebody enters a new patient, they would select that, that group, they would assign them to a group. So if the person came into Banner Health, you would select them as that, in that group. And then anybody who has access to that group can see the records for Banner. Anybody who's outside of the groups um, or who is not assigned to a group, then you can see all the records regardless of what group they're in. Now this, external module uh, automatically creates data access groups for you. So normally what you would have to do is you would have to go in here and create a group and you would have to build out all your groups ahead of time. And then, so let me just put uh, a group in here so you can see. Um, I'm not in a group, but if I added Terry, I could put people in these groups. You would see who was in the group. And you know, once you assign records, you can see who's who, uh, which, how many records are in that group. Now, if I go to the, um, if I go to add a record now, you'll see here that Tucson shows up in my data access group. So, if I was to add a person from Tucson, I would select Tucson from the dropdown, and I would save them in that uh, group. So this is where your data access group gets assigned. And normally when you create a project, you want your data access groups to, you wanna build out your data access groups ahead of time. You wanna assign your users to data access groups. You wanna get it all set up. But if you're doing this on the fly, and let's say you don't know exactly how many data access groups you're gonna have, or it's gonna change, um, this external module will allow you to create new data access groups automatically and um, if the data access group already exists it just adds them to it so uh, let me go to the designer here and i'm gonna i'm gonna remove the required on these just so we don't keep getting that error or that warning rather. And I have a bunch of clinic sites. I'm just gonna clear these out and we'll just do some simple ones. So we'll do Tucson, I will do Phoenix, Flagstaff, And you could have it, like it doesn't have to be uh, a drop down. So, because I know what you're thinking is that if, if I have these values for these choices, why don't I just put these choices in into my data access groups automatically? And I'm just doing this for the demo purposes. I'll switch it to a, a text field later just to show you that it works that way too. Um, so now we have these clinic sites. We've already created Tucson as a data access group. So, um, and let me go to the external model and show you where your configuration is set. So here's the auto DAGs. 
uh, the documentation link. Once again, very sparse uh, and <laughs> just explain what it is. Some of these are really nice and detailed and some of them are just not very descriptive at all. Um, so in the configuration here, all you have to do is you have to set your field that you're going to be using to generate these uh, data access groups. And it has to be on the first instrument, I believe, because you can't, if you have multiple instruments, when you create that first record, you have to assign them to a data access group. You can't create those records and then, you know, three instruments down the road go, oh yeah, I wanted them to be in Tucson. Like it has to be done when the record is created. So it has to be on the first instrument. So I'll set this as a clinic site and we'll save it. And now we'll go back to add a record. And so we already have Tucson here. So I'm just gonna select Phoenix. And then we're gonna save and exit this form. And now if I go to add another record, if we go up to the access groups here, we have Phoenix as a group. And if we go to the data access groups tab, you'll see here that Phoenix exists as a group. And you can click here and rename it if you want. You know, once you're in here, you can and you can change the uh, the other stuff. But if we go back to the records and we add another record, so let's say I select Tucson again, it should just it might add a prefix or a suffix like you did for Phoenix, but it should just automatically put Tucson in. Um, or my, it should automatically just assign it to Tucson. So let's go to add a record here. Yeah, so you can see here that it added Tucson dash one. And the reason it did that is because the, the way the clinic site is formatted with the the ones here. So I think if we did like this, because basically what it's doing is it's adding the, the value of the dropdown to the label of the dropdown and it's using that to create the data access group. Um, <laughs> and now it's giving you Tucson, Tucson, uh, which is weird because when I, you saw that giant list of uh, hospitals that I had in here when I was building this demo and it was working just fine. Uh, and now all of a sudden, you know, this is always seems to be the case. So um, let me go through and I'm going to clear out the data for this. And then we're going to turn it into a text field. And then I'll, I'll do it again that way because we can delete these groups. Um, All right, so we have no more groups. I'm gonna go back to the clinic site field. And I'm gonna delete these and I'm just gonna turn it into a text field. And it should be the same because we have it linked in the config already. And you can see here now that I don't have any, um, now that I don't have any data access groups, um, the rec, the little drop down up here is gone. So I'll say Tucson. If we go back to the data access groups, now Tucson should be there. Now, if we go back to add a record, you'll see now that Tucson's there. Um, nope.
So we're gonna add Tempe as a clinic site. And if we go back to the records, we'll see Tempe and we're gonna say Tucson again. And now it should just have Tempe and Tucson. It shouldn't add another Tucson value. So that's working correctly. Now, if we go to the DAGs, you'll see that there's two Tucson records and there's one uh, Tempe record. So this automatically builds your data access groups um, for you. And it doesn't, you know, you would still have to assign users to the groups but this is a way for you to automatically create these data access groups without having to have them ahead of time. It just depends on what kind of project you have. Like, uh, in my opinion, it would be it would be better for you to have this all set up, um, have all these data access groups set up, have your users in the data access groups. That way, you're guaranteeing that when the data is being entered, the proper people are able to see it. The you're keeping people out who are not supposed to see it. Whereas this way, you're um, you're kind of leaving it up to the external model to do it for you. Because if you go back, if we add a record and leave it blank, um, I don't know if it's just not going to assign them to a data access group or if it's going to create some weird data access group that's, you know, on this blank value and assign them to that data access group. So we'll see. So you can see here that uh, if you don't assign them to a, a data access group, or if you don't fill out the clinic site, then they're not assigned to a group uh, at all down here. And we could go back to the record status dashboard and put this person in. So you see here, there's no assignment. Um, I'm just, just out of curiosity. I'm wondering if I update this, if it will automatically move them to that group. It did. There you go. So, I mean, you would, you're would you basically giving over control to the external module. So it just depends on, you know, it, just like with any of these uh, external modules that we show, it, it really depends on the needs of your project and what kind of overhead you have. Like how much, you know, do you want to let REDCap automate things for you or how much do you control do you want to have? Um, and just like any other, any of the external models that you've seen us demo, sometimes they're finicky and you know you have to figure out exactly how to use them and sometimes they work for things and sometimes they don't you know and you just got to figure out what the corner cases are to um for these projects anybody have any questions on that uh, i've got a question and a couple comments okay so there's a in the external modules there's something that i think is new that says set bag for all records are you do you know what that does uh, I don't. Let me go see. No, 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 no. Down below, below the external module. See where in between uh, dictionary search and data dictionary revisions. Take oh, right here? Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't look, that, that must be a different I think Ex that's external module. Um, no, I think it's part of this. Let me let me disable this to see if it goes away. Yeah. Ah. Uh. So I think, um, I think maybe what that is is if you have a project that doesn't have this module enabled. For example, like if we had this because we still have the data here. Um, let me go to the record status dashboard. So we still have all the data here and we have a clinic site value, but if we don't have that module enabled, let's go to this and we'll delete these. Okay. Uh, let me delete these records and these groups. Cause I think that what'll happen is if you have about, if you have records with those values in it, and then you enable it, it allows you to just run through all your records and do it instead of you having to manually do it. Does that well, make sense? I'm, I'm going to guess what 
So let me talk about just a, a minute about DAGs and then what I think that will happen. Okay. First of all, there's no getting around the value of assigning a person to a DAG, a user to a DAG if you can. The reason for that is that means that any person that enters data for that record, any user that enters data for that record will automatically get that person that record assigned to their DAG. So if I was assigned to Tucson and then I entered a new record, that record would automatically be assigned to my DAG. And anybody who's in my DAG would be able to see it. So there's a lot of value in putting it in first. Um, but once you have DAGs and once you have DAGs set up, you can go back after the fact and either change their DAG with, if you don't have this external module, you can change their DAG using the drop down at the top right where you see the, the DAG assigned. Or if you didn't, if, if you had somebody, a user, let's say Manny, who's not assigned to a group, entered a new record and then after the fact wanted to assign that record to a DAG, um, he could do that by just um, using a drop down in the top right and assign them to a DAG. But what I think happens with that setting the DAG for all records is let's say you've uh, well, let's see, you've got your users and uh, now I'm not so sure. I think what it's going to do, Terry, is, is because it's, it's, the, it's part of this Autodags module. So what I think it's going to do is I set the clinic site as the field. And when I say set the DAGs for all records, it's going to go through that clinic site and assign each one of those records a DAG based on whatever that value to the clinic site is automatically. Yeah. So let's see. So if I go to external modules again, and we'll add it. It should still be configured up with the clinic site. I'll save that. This set DAG for all records pops up again. It's going to ask if I want to do it based on the specific field. I did it. I go back to the DAGs now. Yeah, and so now we have Phoenix, Tucson, Tempe, and we have two records for Tucson. So it just automatically builds the data access groups and puts the records in there for you. Oh, I see. After the fact, I got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if you if you want to do if you want to do utilize this module on a project that you've already collected, you know, hundreds of records for, um, you wouldn't have to go back and do it all manually. You could set the field and say, okay, you know take care of it all for me. Right. That's good. I didn't even notice that it popped up on the side there. So I'm glad, I'm glad you noticed that. Yeah. So that's cool. I still recommend that you assign your users to, you set up your data access groups first <clears throat> and assign your users. But <clears throat> this is a nice tool that allows you to a little more flexibility in, <clears throat> excuse me, setting up your, uh, DAGs. That's cool.